Chapter 4 Snow House The dog sled skimmed silently over the frozen tundra. The seal hunter ran alongside it. Sometimes he cracked his whip against the ice. The snowdrifts looked like giant white sculptures as the sun slipped behind the frozen hills. Then a full orange moon rose in the sky. The moonlight lit a small rounded igloo in front of them. The dog slowed, then stopped. Jack stepped off the sled. Annie went to help unhitch the dogs. Jack took his book out and read about igloos. The word igloo means house in the language of native Arctic people. The house is built with blocks of snow. Dry snow is good wall material because it keeps in the heat. The temperature inside an igloo can be 65 degrees warmer than the temperature outside. Jack took out his notebook. He pulled off his mitten just long enough to write, Igloo means house. Come on, Jack, said Annie. She and the seal hunter were waiting for him in front of the igloo. The dogs were leashed together outside. Jack hurried to join them. The hunter pushed aside animal skins covering the entrance. They stepped inside. A fat candle burned brightly. Shadows danced on walls of ice and snow. Jack and Annie sat on a fur-covered platform. They watched as the seal hunter moved about. First, he lit a small stove. Then he slipped outside. He came back with a snowball and chunks of frozen meat. He put the snowball in a pot over the stove. Then he added the meat. What's he making? asked Annie. Jack pulled out his book and found a picture of the hunter cooking. He and Annie read the words silently. There was a time when nearly all of the Arctic people's food and clothing and tools came from Arctic animals, especially the seal. Nearly every part of the seal could be eaten. Lamps were fueled with seal fat. Clothing was made from seal skin and knives and needles were carved from seal bones. He must be boiling seal meat, said Jack. The poor seals, said Annie. The seal hunter looked up. They are not poor, he said. They help us because they know we would die without them. Oh, said Annie. In return, we always thank the animal spirits, said the seal hunter. How do you do that, said Jack. We have many special ceremonies, said the seal hunter. He reached under the fur-covered platform and took out two wooden masks. Soon there will be a ceremony to honor the spirit of the polar bear, he said. I carved these masks for the ceremony. Polar bears, said Annie. Yes, said the seal hunter. Just as the seal has given us many gifts, so has the polar bear. Like what? said Jack. Long ago, the polar bear taught us how to live in the ice and snow, said the seal hunter. Taught you? said Jack. I mean, can you give us some facts? The seal hunter smiled. Yes, he said. A polar bear catches a seal when the seal comes up to breathe through a hole in the ice. The oldest seal hunters watched the polar bear and learned. This is how my father taught me to hunt seal, as his father taught him. That's a good fact, said Jack. The very first of my people learned to make igloos from polar bears, said the hunter. Polar bears build snow houses by digging caves in the drifts. Another good fact, said Jack. Sometimes the polar bear can even teach people to fly, said the seal hunter. That's an amazing fact, said Annie. Jack smiled. The rest sounded like true facts, he said, but I know that's pretend. The hunter just laughed, then turned back to his cooking. That's why he wasn't surprised to hear about the treehouse, Jack thought. If he believes polar bears can fly, he probably would believe anything. 
The seal hunter lifted the chunks of boiled seal out of his pot. He dropped them into a wooden bucket and gave it to Annie. Let's feed the dogs, he said. Oh, boy, said Annie. She followed the hunter outside, swinging the bucket. Jack quickly threw his notebook and the Arctic book into his pack. He started to follow them. Then his gaze fell on the two bear masks. He picked them up to get a better look. Each was carved in the shape of a polar bear's face, with a blunt nose and roundish ears. There were two holes for eyes and a strap to hold it on your head. Suddenly, howls split the air. The dogs were barking and growling. Annie squealed. Are the dogs attacking her? Jack wondered. Annie! Still holding the bear masks, Jack charged out of the igloo. Magic Treehouse Book 12 Lions at Lunchtime Chapter 4 Step off. Jack stepped off the sled. Be built with. The house is built with blocks of snow. Be waiting for. She and the seal hunter were waiting for him in front of the igloo. Push aside. The hunter pushed aside animal skins covering the entrance. Move about. They watched as the seal hunter moved about. Be made from. Clothing was made from seal skin. In return. In return, we always thank the animal spirits. Honor the spirit. Soon there will be a ceremony to honor the spirit of the polar bear. Gaze fall on. Then his gaze fell on the two bear masks. It's now or never.